It took more than two days to get here, from remote mountain villages in Guatemala to Toronto's Pearson Airport. And even though they were afraid of flying, they had to come to Canada, they say. They had to make this journey for justice. I feel sadness in my heart, she says, but I had to come. It is an extraordinary visit, believed to be the first time people from another country accusing a Canadian mining corporation of human rights violations have come to Canada to tell their story. And it is a shocking one documented in three civil negligence suits filed against HUD Bay, a mining company based in Ontario. In the documents, Mayan farmers accuse local security forces hired by the company of shooting, killing and raping Indigenous people. People who refused to leave company land because they claimed it as their ancestral home. Rosa Elbira Koch Ich is one of 11 women who says dozens of security workers stormed her village in January 2007 and destroyed her home, but not before nine of them raped her. <laughs> they just grabbed me and threw me to the ground, she says. They raped me. They destroyed my body. Mamita, mamita, han matado a mi papá. Angelica Koch is the widow of a well-known community activist who spoke out against the evictions. Koch says security officers brutally attacked her husband Adolfo with a machete before shooting him at close range in September 2009. Our authorities don't do anything, she says. They are corrupt. That's why I made the decision to seek justice elsewhere. It's what compelled Germán Chubkok to file his suit to argue it should be heard in Canada. Koch was shot that same day when he says security forces fired at a group of protesters. The attack left him paralyzed. The bullet is still lodged near his spine. Que miran cómo estoy, cómo me dejaron. No estamos mintiendo. I want Canadian people to look at me, he says, and see me like this. And no. I'm not lying. Look at how I am now. I'm not lying. In a statement to CBC News, Hud Bay expresses deep sadness about the injuries and loss of life that occurred that day, but that based on extensive internal investigations and eyewitness reports, Hud Bay believes that the allegations in these matters are without merit and is vigorously defending itself against them. The company goes on to say that any trial should be held in Guatemala given that the statements of claim are about events that are alleged to have taken place in Guatemala. I think our main argument is that the, the company uh, had uh, direct control over what happened in Guatemala and that they were extremely careless uh, and uh, reckless. Murray Klippenstein is representing the Guatemalans pro bono. He and his clients want the case heard in Ontario. The legal system in Guatemala right now, and sadly, doesn't work. It's corrupt. Witnesses are intimidated. Judges are intimidated. The evidence is clear. It just doesn't work. So you can get away with things in Guatemala, whether it's environmental damage or harming local communities or rape and murder through your security forces. You can get away with that. Do not be afraid. It's why the Guatemalans are here being readied for cross-examination by the mining company's lawyers this week. Part of the legal process leading to a hearing in March where a judge will decide where the case will be heard. It will be an uphill battle. Similar cases have never made it very far in Canadian courts, often because of issues of jurisdiction. Ian Binney is a retired Supreme Court judge who has tracked the legal challenges of corporate accountability for years and says the corporate veil should be and can be pierced in Canadian courts. Eventually, the courts are going to have to face up to the fact that in a responsible legal system, uh, people have a right to a day in court. And, and if the only court available uh, is in Canada, then that's uh, where the problem should be faced. It is a test of justice and a test of faith, and it will likely take years to resolve. But with little left to lose, they say, they can only wait for that day.